Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's the middle of the month, so that means it's time for our GPU pricing update. I feel like I say this every month, but honestly, not a lot has been happening in the GPU market, certainly not any major releases to shake things up, although we are just a few weeks away from AMD launching new Radeon graphics cards. At least, that's what we expect to happen with AMD hosting some sort of reveal event at Gamescom next week on August 25th. AMD hasn't explicitly said what they will be showing at that event, but it's widely expected to be the reveal of new mid-range graphics cards in the Radeon RX 7800 XT and RX 7700 XT. We've seen pretty consistent leaks relating to these products over the last few weeks, things like PowerColor accidentally revealing the 7800 XT early, both models passing through the regulatory bodies like the EEC and so on, and when the leaks start flowing, it's usually an indicator of a close launch. We're not expecting the cards to be released next week though, that's more likely to happen sometime in September. Both of these models have the opportunity to shake up a stale and boring GPU market where buyers just aren't overly interested in current offerings. However, knowing AMD's latest release strategies, they may not take that opportunity and instead opt to release new models at unattractive price points. We've talked extensively in our last Q&A series about AMD's poor marketing and bizarre launch day moves. Hopefully, we don't see a repeat of the RX 7600 and RX 7900 XT all over again. The 7800 XT and 7700 XT are expected to sit in the middle of AMD's lineup, both using Navi 32 silicon. We don't have final specifications for these products yet, although rumors suggest the full Navi 32 die has 60 compute units and a 256-bit memory bus, which will probably be the configuration we'll see for the 7800 XT, with the 7700 XT then cut down from there. Various leaks have suggested the 7800 model will pack 16 gigabytes of memory, while the 7700 model will get 12 gigabytes. AMD will have to be pretty careful with pricing these products, given the 7900 XT has fallen from its launch MSRP of $900 to more like $750 US in the current market. The 6950 XT, 6800 XT, and 6800 all continue to be available brand new at retail these days as well, occupying price points between $640 and $430. Plus, of course, AMD has to contend with NVIDIA's competitors, like the RTX 4070 and the poorly received 4060 Ti. Rumored specs for the 7800 XT suggesting just 60 compute units also doesn't indicate a particularly huge jump in performance, given the equivalent RDNA 2 model is the RX 6800 also with 60 compute units. If performance ends up around the level of a 6800 XT, AMD would probably need to price their new model around $450 US, given you can grab a 6800 XT right now for $520, and buyers won't be interested in a card with zero price to performance improvement. That's assuming AMD has removed the brain worms that have influenced their past releases. If those brain worms are still there, I wouldn't be expecting this to be a particularly exciting release and pricing would probably be something silly like $600. I guess we'll have to wait and see what they end up doing. Compounding all of this is the strange release of the Radeon RX 7900 GRE, which we looked at on the channel last week. While largely a China-only product with a few OEM and system integrations in other regions, it is still part of AMD's lineup and has an official MSRP of $650 US, again, despite not really being available. AMD will have to slot any new products in around this, so we are expecting any 7800 XT to be priced below this. It's just a question of how much below. When looking at the current GPU market, starting with the latest generation of NVIDIA GPUs, there isn't a lot going on here. A few minor price reductions here and there, the biggest of which being the RTX 4080 dropping to $1,100, but nothing that will get anyone excited. The RTX 4070 Ti and 4070 remain rock solid at their MSRP, and there doesn't appear to be any indication of that changing. Given less demand for cards like the RTX 4060 Ti, I would expect a few flash sales every now and then, but for now, you can expect to pay MSRP level pricing, which is pretty horrible. For AMD's RX 7000 series, it's a similar story in that prices haven't changed all that much since last month, although at least for these GPUs, both the 7900XTX and 7900XT have been available consistently below their MSRP. The RX 7600 is still largely an MSRP card, and we wouldn't recommend it for anything above $250 US, so right now, given other cards in the market, it should be ignored. 
There's also Intel's lineup, which honestly continues to improve and you can expect to see a revisit of some of these cards on the channel soon. The A770 16GB has returned to the market and is now down at $330, making it the cheapest current generation model to offer more than 8GB of VRAM by far. Intel continues to be aggressive on pricing the other variants too, so it's always worth keeping them in the back of your mind, and I'm very keen to see how Steve evaluates them in the current market soon. Previous generation models are also still widely available brand new at retailers like Newegg. The big mover at the moment is the RTX 3070, which has fallen to $380 US, a 14% drop on last month. The RTX 3060 Ti is also now down at just $320. These cards are priced pretty favourably compared to the new 4060 Ti models and the 4060, so in my opinion, they would get the nod over Nvidia's newer offerings. The 3060 Ti in particular is just $20 more than the RTX 4060, despite being over 15% faster on average, which gives it clearly better cost per frame, although you are missing out on features like DLSS3 frame generation, so I guess that's something you'll have to weigh up. AMD's RX 6000 series is also an option. The RX 6800 has hit a new historic low of $430 US, which is a great price up against the 3070 and 4060 Ti, offering twice the VRAM and more performance in this $400 tier. Other models are similar in price to prior months and continue to be good value choices in the mainstream market, especially if you have less than $250 to spend. For example, the 6650 XT at $235 offers similar performance to the 7600 and the RTX 3060 at a better price. There don't appear to be many signs of these cards going out of stock immediately, so I would expect pricing to remain around this level for a while to come. On the used market, we haven't seen much price movement in the last few months, just a very slow trickle downwards with a steady rate of supply. Month on month, there's been a few cards drop in price, the 3090 Ti and 3050 are some examples with more than a 5% price reduction, but generally speaking, if you are interested in a last generation model used, you're faced with around a 24% saving over buying that card new. No major outliers here, at least on the Nvidia side of things. For AMD's RDNA 2 line, we see a 22% saving on average compared to buying a card new, again with very little movement in general for pricing. However, this 22% saving is just an average. You can save quite a bit more than 22% right now, grabbing an RX 6600 XT or RX 6600 used, for example. However, some mid-tier and upper-end models are less than a 22% discount. The RX 6800 at just a 17% saving is perhaps not worth it compared to buying one new, although I guess it always depends on your circumstance and how much you're willing to save to sacrifice a warranty and known card quality. These are also just average eBay sales prices. It is possible to get a deal below what is listed here, which would increase their value. As for older GPUs like what we saw just before, not much price movement here. Supply seems to be slowly reducing for these models over time, although many are still viable for gaming today. The RTX 2070, for example, is about the same performance as an RX 6600 XT and is priced at $178 used versus $167 for the 6600 XT used, which seems reasonable accounting for the features difference. The GTX 16 series is one of the only viable ways right now to grab a GPU for your system below about $140. Now, yeah, you could purchase a 6500 XT or an ARC A380 in that price range, but honestly, I'd just go for the GTX 1660 Ti at $100 US or even the GTX 1660 at just $84 on average. But again, there hasn't been a ton of price movement month on month. These are just what these cards are worth these days. And finally, we have the RX 5000 series. Pricing is stabilized across the last few months, and these models continue to be great value given their sort of performance on offer, although it is highly likely you will be buying an X mining card. Like the GTX 16 series, these are viable options if you want a GP you below $140 as they are much better than any of the new models in a similar price range. So yeah, not a particularly eventful month in the GPU market. Some GPUs have hit new historic low prices and could be attractive options to buy. Models like the RX 6800, RTX 3060 Ti and RX 6650 XT all make sense at current prices. And once again, it's these last generation models which are more eye-catching than anything from the current generation, especially if you are after a mid-priced or lower graphics card, which let's be honest is most people. 
What's interesting is that we're actually quite a few months on now from the launch of new generation graphics cards, and these older models are still in stock at many retailers. The RTX 4070, for example, has been available for five months now, and in that time, Nvidia have not been able to clear out all supply for the RTX 3070 Ti or RTX 3070. In prior generations, those older models would have been snapped up quick smart at discounted prices, but not these days. I think this is why AMD has waited so long to release the RX 7800 XT and 7700 XT. There are still plenty of RX 6800 XTs floating around, which will likely compete with the new models on price and performance. Right now, if you are interested in grabbing a GPU between $300 and $600 US, it's probably worth waiting to see exactly where those upcoming RDNA 3 GPUs lie and what impact that will have on other graphics cards. We're expecting to learn more next week with a likely release in September, so definitely not long to wait. Outside of that price range though, pricing is pretty stagnant, so I'd either wait for a flash sale to grab a really good deal or keep waiting. The exception to this would be if you were waiting to see prices plateau before jumping in. I think it's safe to say the current pricing structure we have is here to stay for a while, so if that's a suitable price for you, then it's not like you're going to be buying now and then you're going to be stung like next month when there's a huge price drop. It's pretty unlikely that it's going to be happening uh, in the current market. So yeah, that's it for this month's GPU pricing update. I know a lot of you guys still continue to enjoy this series, so thanks for all the support. And if you yeah, like this video, then there's always subscribing or supporting the channel directly via the links in the description below. You'll gain access to some cool benefits. If you sign up to Patreon or Float Plan, we've got like our Discord community, we've got our monthly live streams, all that sorts of stuff. Also, we started a podcast, the Hardware Unbox podcast. So maybe I'll link that below. If you if you missed it throughout the week, then yeah, we'll be having a weekly podcast. That's always fun. So yeah, anyway, that's it for this one. I'll catch you in the next one.